Hello everyone and welcome back to Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse, the Lost Planeswalker. And today I have, I guess, breaking news. I don't know if this is brand new, but this is a first look at Thunder Junction, Bloomborough, Modern Horizons 3, and Assassin's Creed. I have no idea when these cards came out or where they came out from, but as I was making my next Fallout video, I found this and boy, did we get some awesome, awesome cards. I'm so excited to see what was coming out in this set, but we honestly got cards that are just too powerful, too good. Uh, I don't know. So I'm just going to run through the top document and kind of go through it. So first off, we're talking about Bloomborough. So Bloomborough, if you don't know, is an entirely animal based set. There's no humans, you know, so everything we're getting is going to be a creature something, you know? So let's start out and look at the four creatures I think were revealed for this set. Uh, but we got Burke, Long Ear of the Law, Bria, Riptide Rogue, Mabel, Heir of Karg Flame, and Lumara, Bellower of the Woods. So Burke and Bria here, we have a legendary creature, Rabbit Soldier with Vigilance. When Burke, Long Ear of the Law, enters, put a plus one plus one counter on each of the two target creatures. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on attacks, double the number of plus one plus one counters on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that seems pretty cool. Okay, great. So Bria Riptide Rogue is two blue red ledger creature otter rogue with prowess. Other creatures you control have prowess. Oh, okay. Awesome. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. What is going on here? I, I, this is the first time I'm reading these cards. I haven't even read through them. So my reactions are genuine here. Okay, that seems crazy strong. Very, very cool. So next, Mabel, heir of Karg Flame and Lumara, Beller of the Woods. Mabel is one red, white, ledger creature, mouse soldier. Other mice you control get plus one, plus one. Okay. When Mabel, heir of Karg Flame enters battlefield, create Karg Flame, a legendary colorless equipment artifact token with equip creature gets plus one, plus one and has vigilance, trample, and haste equipped for two. Oh, interesting. So it's a legendary colorless equipment, so you can only have one of them, but it's a cool little mouse soldier commander. Look at this guy. He's adorable. Okay, so next is Lumara, Bellower of the Woods. Four green, green, ledger creature, elemental bear. Vigilance reach. Lumara, Bellower of the Woods, power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Okay, great. When Lumara enters, mill four cards, then return all lands from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. So just dumping a whole bunch of lands in the graveyard and then getting them back with this and this notably doesn't have trample on it which i would like it to but obviously put that in the deck and you just have a big bear coming at you so very very cool cards i am just so thrilled to see anything here so uh let's start now and look at assassin's creed we got a ton of cards for assassin's creed and i don't know how many here actually so i'm just gonna run through these that's the next set we got here so starting out we have hidden blade ezio blade of vengeance and eivor battle ready i'm sorry if i mispronounce these cards i i've not played an assassin's creed game in such a long time but Hidden Blade, two generic artifact equipment flash. When Hidden Blade enters battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. If the creature is an assassin, it gains death touch until end of turn. Okay, I love this. The crypt creature gets plus one, plus one, and has first strike. Of course it does. So this gives something death touch and first strike, meaning that you're just going to deal damage first and kill whatever creature you're attaching this to if it's an assassin. So pretty good. Honestly, not as good as I would want. There's obviously some assassins in magic, but not as many as you would like. So next we have Ezio Blade of Vengeance, three blue black ledger creature human assassin with death touch. Whenever an assassin you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Okay. I mean, I assume that most of these assassins are going to have some sort of protection just to get around stuff. So, I mean, this seems okay. Next up, we have Ivor Battle Ready, Legendary Creature, Human Assassin, Warrior, Vigilance, and Haste. Whenever Ivor Battle Ready attacks, it deals damage equal to the total number of equipment you control to each opponent. Oh, interesting. This Boros Commander just wants you to deal a ton of damage just by attacking. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. I, I like that. So, next up, we have Altair, Ibon... Lahard, Ezio, Ator de France, France, and the Animus. So Altair is a Mardu commander, legendary creature, human assassin with first strike. Whenever Altair attacks, exile up to one target assassin creature card from your graveyard with a memory counter on it. Then for each creature card you own in exile with a memory counter on it, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. Exile those tokens at the end of combat. So you just make a bunch of assassins from like you just exile a ton of these with these counters on them and then whenever you just create a copy of it and attack with those okay this is super neat 
I can see this deck being sick for just dumping a whole bunch of really good big stuff into your graveyard, exiling them, and then getting them out. But I guess this only cares about assassins, so you are limited to assassins only. So that's a really cool card. So Ezio, again, but this one is just one in a black, Ledger Creature Human Assassin. So Menace, Assassin spells you cast have free running black black. What is that supposed to mean? Okay, whatever. So Ezio deals combat damage to a player. You may pay Wooberg. If that player has 10 or less life, when you do, that player loses the game. <laughs> okay, so all you have to do is lower them to 10 or less life and you just pay Wooberg and win. Um, that seems a little strong to me, but that's pretty cool. Okay. And then the Animus here, Legendary Artifact. At the beginning of your end step, exile up to one target Legendary Creature card from your graveyard with a memory counter on it. Tap until your next turn, target Legendary Creature you control becomes a copy of target Creature card in exile with a memory counter on it. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay, so this is what I was talking about with Altair earlier. But if you can just do this and then, you know, have a one-drop Legendary Creature and just have it become, you know, something huge... That seems really cool. This is going to be a broken card. That's going to be an expensive card for just how good that is. Okay, so now let's see what we got next. We have Cleopatra Exiled Pharaoh, Cover of Darkness, and Temporal Trespass. Okay, very interesting. Okay, so Cleopatra Exiled Pharaoh is a Ledger Creature Human Noble with allies. At the beginning of your, your end step, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two other target Legendary Creatures. Betrayal. Whenever a Legendary Creature with a counter on it dies, draw a card for each counter on it you lose two life oh sick oh wow okay so you just fill up your board with a bunch of creatures with counters and then when they die you draw a ton of cards so notably it just says a counter or each counter so it doesn't have to be plus one plus one counters it can be any kind of counter if it dies you just draw that many cards wow okay that is gonna be a incredibly strong golgari commander because at the beginning of your end step so this is going to be a Legendary Matters deck in Golgari. So that's going to be very cool to build. Yeah, I, I wonder, this would be awesome if you paired it with Marin, because then if this gets removed or if one, something gets removed, you can just bring it back and just put more counters on it. Ozolith, also just a great card. So next up, Cover of Darkness is an enchantment. So one in a black enchantment. As Cover of Darkness enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creature of the chosen type I fear. This is a reprint. This is a very old reprint from Onslaught. And this is actually a very expensive card. This is a $50 card. So this is an awesome reprint here. Okay. And then also Temporal Trespass. This is also a reprint. You can delve this out and then take an extra turn after this one and you have to exile Temporal Trespass. So you could take an extra turn for three blue mana. Wow. Okay. We're getting some awesome reprints here as well. Okay. Let's see. What else is new here? So I think the last three cards we got that are new is Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Haystack and Sword of Feast and Famine. Okay, great. Leonardo da Vinci is two in a blue, Ledger Creature, Human Artificer, three blue blue until end of turn. Thopters you control have base power and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Two in a blue, draw a card, then discard a card. If the card discarded this way was an artifact, exile it from your graveyard. If you do, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 0-2 Thopter artifact creature with flying in addition to its other types. I can't even get into the big braining you're going to have to do when brewing this card and just all the nonsense you can get into. Wow. Okay. Wow. This is really cool. This is really cool. Leonardo da Vinci is <laughs> is going to be a threatening commander, <laughs> as funny as that is to say. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, next up is Haystack, one in a white artifact, two and tap target creature you control phases out i mean that seems fine yeah you just want to protect your stuff just have it phase out hey somebody's gonna cast a removal spell on it nope just have it phase out okay no that's good and then sword of feast and famine again another 30 40 dollar card here we're getting an awesome reprint of it we're getting like a cool alternate art as well and if you don't know what for sword of feast and famine is it's the in my opinion best sword of which is three artifact equipment equipped creature gets plus two plus two and has protection from black and green and whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player that player discards card and you untap all lands you control so you're making your opponents lose stuff you get to untap all your lands for a ton of mana generation and you know you can pair this with the extra combat thing and you just hit every time you can just basically win and make so much mana but incredible i did not expect to see these cards today nonetheless 
how powerful these are and i know that they're only doing so many of these these are going to do the beyond boosters so i don't know how many cards are going to be in each beyond booster it might be like the aftermath set um boosters where there was like six cards in each pack because there's a lot of really good reprints that they showed off and these cards just seem really powerful as well so i'm sure that there's going to be a lot of debate here but yeah let's just dive right into modern horizons 3 because this seems stupidly good um i'm looking through the cards real quick so I, I i guess i just have to start reading them so first off we got lelia the blade reforged emrakul the world anew which i believe is a new card and then a johnny Nactil per pariah which i think is also maybe this is an existing card here no this is a brand new card okay so lelia the blade reforged if you haven't played is a great card because it is haste when it enters you exile the top card of your library and you play the card this turn and then whenever one or more cards are exiled from your library or graveyard put a plus one plus one counter on lelia she's an awesome card she gives you great card advantage and this is going to be interesting coming to modern but emrakul a world anew is 12 mana ledger creature eldrazi when you cast a spell gain control of all creatures target player controls flying protection from spells and from permanents that were cast this turn when when Emrakul, the world anew, leaves the battlefield, sacrifice all creatures you control. Madness, pay six generic mana. So if you discard this for six mana, you gain control of all creatures target player controls. Okay, so if you're playing a Tron deck, this just is sick. You just use the Urza lands to generate six mana or 12. Either, either of those is super good and just steal everything. Okay, um, that's not okay. That's not okay. Okay, we have a Johnny here, Nuktal Pariah, Ledger Creature Cat Warrior. When a Johnny enters the battlefield, create a 2-1 White Cat Warrior Creature Token. Whenever one or more other cats you control die, you may exile a Johnny, then return him to the battlefield transformed under his owner's control. And he transforms into a Johnny Nuktal Avenger. So he turns into a Planeswalker, which is sick. So plus two, put a plus one, plus one counter on each cat you control. Oh, wow. Okay, that's pretty good. Zero, create a 2-1 white cat warrior creature token. When you do, if you control a red permanent other than a Johnny, he deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to any target. Or minus four, each opponent chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among non-land permanents they control, and sacks the rest. Yeah, okay. No, that's not okay. <laughs> This is, this is not okay. This is not okay. This is not okay. This set just popped up out of nowhere, and this, none of these cards are okay. And I'm going to get into the next set of cards, which are fetch lands. They're reprinting fetch lands. So get ready for Polluted Delta, Wooded Foothills, Windswept Heath, Flooded Strand, and Bloodstained Mire. Nothing about that is okay. Nothing about them reprinting these cards is okay, and they're doing it. And oh my goodness, is this set going to cost an arm and a leg? I mean, I've, I've read through eight of the cards, and already I can see just from these eight cards you know, several hundred dollars of value. Holy cow. So I guess we'll just continue here with Psychic Frog, Priest of Titania, and It That Heralds the End. Ooh, that's a good name. So Psychic Frog is a Demir. Creature Frog, whenever Psychic Frog deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, draw a card. Discard a card, put a plus one plus one counter on Psychic Frog. Exile three cards from your graveyard. Psychic Frog gains flying until end of turn. I, okay, this is great. I don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, this is a good card. You can buff it up. You can put a bunch of stuff in your bin with it. Cool. I, I don't need to say anything about Priest of Titania because if you've ever played an elf deck that had Priest of Titania in it, it just makes a stupid amount of mana. In addition, it adds a green for each elf on the battlefield. So if your opponents just happen to have elves, guess what? You get to make more mana. Cool. This is coming to modern. That seems really great. And it that heralds the end is one in a generic creature Eldrazi Drone. Colorless spells you cast with mana value 7 or greater cost 1 less to cast. Other the colorless creatures get plus 1 plus 1. We didn't need this. Nobody needed this. This card didn't need to exist. That is stupid good. Makes your stuff cheaper to cast and just buffs it up. For 2 mana. 2-2. Two, two. Colorless creatures did not need this. Eldrazi are already broken. This is Oh, oh my goodness. We did. Why? Why are they doing this? Okay, so I guess let's talk about the last two cards, I believe, that are from the set before we get into Thunder Junction, because oh my gosh, are these cards amazing? I'm so excited to talk about these and show these off. They are some of the best art I think I've ever seen in Magic the Gathering. But we have Flare of Cultivation and Scurry of Gremlins. So Flare of Cultivation is one green green sorcery. You may sacrifice a non-token green creature rather than pay the spell's mana cost. We didn't need these. Okay. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards. Put one of them onto the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand, then shuffle. So instead of playing three mana, you just sack a green creature and just 
go get to cultivate. Yeah, why not? Okay, what? Whatever. Why not? It just you're not cheating any mana or anything. So whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, and then scurry of gremlins, two red white enchantment. When scurry of gremlins enters the battlefield, create two one one red gremlin creature tokens. Then you get an amount of energy equal to the number of creatures you control. Pay four creatures you control. Get plus one plus zero and gain a haste until end of turn. Again, why? Why did we need this? Why do we need this? What? I, I, these are good. These are so good. <sighs> okay. Well, awesome. That's awesome. I mean, that's that's really good. So I don't know what else to say here. Um, this those were amazing. I I I can't wait to show you these Thunder Junction cards because your jaw is gonna drop when you see some of these. So okay, that's it for Modern Horizons for now. I guess the price of this set is just gonna skyrocket, and hopefully they reprint some more good things and it doesn't turn out like Commander Masters. But it's it's Modern Horizon set, so it's gonna be broken and pushed. But let's move right on through to Outlaws of Thunder Junction because that is the next main set that is coming out this year, and some of the cards look great. I honestly haven't read a lot of them yet, uh, so let's let's take a look at it. So first off here, we got two, I think, reprints um, right away that they're showing off, which is Crime and Punishment, which is originally from Dissension, which is the first Ravnica set, I believe, or maybe the second Ravnica set, and then Thoughtseize. And honestly, I'm not mad about we us getting a reprint of Thoughtseize because this card was getting kind of up in price again. So this is an awesome version of this card looking at it and these are both great cards i'm so excited that we got this and we got these cool frames for both of these and i did theorize with my friend that we were going to get like a wanted poster frame and this is just the basis of it as we get into these you'll see more but next up we have hell to pay fizzle thip lost on the range and oko the ring leader now we knew we were getting oko he was kind of very heavily featured in the art so this was cool to see but hell to pay is x and a red sorcery hell to pay deals x damage to target creature create a number of tapped treasure tokens equal to the amount of excess damage dealt to the creature this way i was just reviewing a ton of cards from fallout that if you just discount them you're going to get to get a ton of extra mana just like this card is going to generate if you can discount the spell by three let's say you're just making treasure tokens for free at this point and that is awesome fibble thip lost on the range is one blue blue ledger creature homunculus ward two you may look at the top card of your library anytime the top card of your library has plot the plot cost is equal to its mana cost. You may plot non-land cards from the top of your library. What is what what does plot mean? What does plot mean? Is this just something we're not gonna get to know? Are they gonna do this to us again? We're not gonna get to know what plot means until this set starts coming out? I, I guess so. So cool. I guess we'll see what, what happens then. But next up we have Oko the Ringleader, which is the planeswalker of this set. Two green blue. At the beginning of combat on your turn, Oko the Ringleader becomes a copy of up to one target creature you control until end of turn, except he has hex proof of course he does <laughs> why why not just make a copy of something huge and give him hex proof i guess to protect him as he, while he is a creature that makes sense plus one draw two cards if you've committed a crime this turn discard a card otherwise discard two cards sure why not i don't even know what that's supposed to mean but that's great minus one create a three three green elk creature token honestly that's probably pretty good for the decks that he's gonna find himself in and minus five for each other non-land permanent you control create a token that's a copy of that permanent so you're telling me this only has to be on the board for three turns first turn you play it take it up second turn you have it out there take it up again third turn you take this down and you just make a copy of everything you own or you just have a token doubling effect and when this enters you immediately take it down and just make copies of everything oka was not okay the first time and he's certainly not okay this time but i guess let's just see the other uh three cards that were revealed which is tiny bones the pickpocket sword of wealth and power and nexus of becoming so tiny bones the pickpocket is a single black ledger creature skeleton rogue with death touch whenever tiny bones the pickpocket deals combat damage to a player you may cast target non-land permanent card from that player's graveyard and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell okay that seems great mono black commander where you just kill their best stuff and then just cast it from their graveyard okay this seems pretty cool tiny bones is going to be a fun card to play but sword of wealth in power is not a card i expected to see i thought we were done with the sword of cycle but i guess they wanted a broken one and this one is pretty broken if you ask me equip creature gets plus two plus two and has protection from instant and sorceries so good luck removing this card whatever it's attached to i guess but whenever equip creature deals combat damage to a player create a treasure token when you next cast an instant or sorcery this turn copy that spell you may choose new targets for the copy so you're telling me that if i play a nine drop spell while this is on the battlefield i get another nine drop spell they printed this on a chandra that was like six mana 
and was going to get killed immediately when she entered because that effect was too good. And now you're putting this on an artifact that's so good. I, it's so good. I don't know what to say. This is so good. And then lastly, we have Nexus of Becoming. Six generic mana artifact. At the beginning of combat on your turn, draw a card. Then you may exile an artifact or creature card from your hand. If you do, create a token that's a copy of the exiled card, except it's a 3-3 golem artifact creature token in addition to its other types. I don't know what to say. I mean, you can cheat out so many gross, disgusting things. And the fact that there are 3-3 doesn't matter for most of the time. Sometimes you're going to be putting things out there that are even bigger than they are like tiny bones or fizzle tip that we got here making them three threes but just being able to cheat out i don't know something that gives everything indestructible and it's just on the board as well like an avacyn let's say cool i mean that's cool yeah just give all your creatures indestructible for you know six mana i guess and then just every turn after you're just getting good value off of it so i get it you know you're paying six mana for something good and you're getting to cheat out stuff every turn that's good and probably gonna help you win the game so i'm just gonna end this video this is an awesome reveal i don't know why we got all of these cards i don't know when they decided to do this i don't know if there was a preview i have no idea but thank you for watching if there's a card you think is just stupidly powerful or broken or you're excited to see reprinted let me know i'd love to see that in comments down below and obviously if you haven't been seeing my fallout videos did a fallout video for every day this week and i'll be doing more but also check these out if you want to subscribe to me to check out when i release these spoiler videos you know to make sure you get that content as soon as possible you know please follow me i'd super appreciate it but let's see today's scryfall card of the day which is volrath the fallen i stepped out i did not step down thank you so much for watching and as always i'll see you later planeswalkers